Sure. What a what isn't wasn't that awesome? I mean, I just heard this word that the Lord has given me. To, there is a word from the Lord, and, and I've been hearing it all day. Amen. And, and he's that kind of God. He will make confirmation Amen. and give you confirmation. Our scripture is going to come from John chapter 14, verses 5 through 14. You get there, you can raise your feet as I read the scripture. John chapter 14, verses 5 through 14. Amen. 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 Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Mm-hmm. Jesus said unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me have seen the Father. And he says, Thou then show us the Father. Believest that thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sakes. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whosoever, and whatsoever, ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I would do it. Amen. 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 Father God, had me now behind thy cross. Holy Spirit, speak to your people. Yes, yes. You have given this word unto me for your people. My God, my God. Strengthen me as only you can, Holy Spirit. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. amen, amen. My scripture check, the, the scripture I'm going to come from will be... 13 and 14, my preaching text. Amen. Amen. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. The Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I come to you under the authority of Jesus Christ to minister to you about having a talk with the Creator. Talking to God Almighty, asking him about all of everything. I said that, not to leave anything out. Since Jesus came and died and rose, he gave us permission to come to the throne of God with all and everything. Not to leave anything out. Uh To tell God our situation, our problems, our worries, our doubts, the triumphs, the victories, the successes our pains, our aches, our disappointments, not to leave out our healing, Uh deliverances, Mm -hmm. thanking God for all things, everything, not leaving out nothing. My brothers and sisters, we must bow down physically and mentally and spiritually before the throne of God and let him know continually our status quo. Mm -hmm. In other words, stand in prayer. The purpose of prayer. Christians are called to a lifestyle of prayer. But many of us have come to see prayer as nothing more than calling upon the heavenly, their heavenly butler for daily service or crying out to their heavenly lifeguard when they are drowning in their daily circumstances. Jesus said that because he was going to the Father, 
that we would do, that he was going to the Father, that we would do even greater works than he did. Right. John 14 and 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. Prayer is the responsibility of every Christian. God works tells us to pray. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, the word tells us to pray without ceasing. Brothers and sisters, if there ever was a time for prayer, we need it even more so today. We cannot hesitate. I, I've seen on this morning in the news where Donald Trump, the president, has signed these orders, these executive orders, where he's stopping people from coming to the country. Amen. Already, we could see the chaos that's about to become. The very thing that we began to fear when, this young, when he was elected president, we saw these things coming. Amen. Oh, but prayer. Now, now I'm talking to God. Now, talking to God about everyday business is fine. We're supposed to. Mm-hmm. Prayer is a serious conversation request. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, Father, I talk to you. We have talked to you about how this went and that went. God, cover me. Mm-hmm. You remember my last sermon to those who was here where I said, I got you covered. Mm-hmm. But now, prayer. It's time to take it serious. Asking God to move on the needs of others and on the guarding of our minds from going astray, Mm -hmm. staying focused on him. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We could shoot and kill that. But against principalities and the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. High places, government and high places. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, For we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, guarding our thoughts. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the kingdom of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Telling God everything, Everything. all thing, everything, and leaving out nothing. When you pray, do you tell God everything? Do you trust him with everything? Do you? I would like to talk to you for a second about the prayer of words, the power of words. Uh Words are singularly the most powerful force available to humanity. I did not say the believer. We can choose this force constructively with words of encouragement or destructively. Using words of despair, words have energy and power with the ability to help, to heal, to hinder, to hurt, to harm, to humiliate, and to humble. Consider the powerful force of words we utter, that we speak. Consider them. Before speaking, take a few moments to contemplate what you will say and how you will say it while considering the impact they will have on the listeners. Power of words. Ephesians 6 and 17 tells us, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Paul called for believers to put on the whole armor, which points to its divine nature, more than its completeness. Paul describes five components of defensive armor. In these verses, only one offensive weapon, a short sword used in combat. Symbolizing the word of God because because of its design, content and origin, scripture can be described as faithful. But before you grab your sword, Ephesians 6 and 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. 
Each piece of armor must carefully be put on with prayer, drawn upon divine resources. The, this prayer is spirit energized, spirit enabled, and spirit directed. Praying in the spirit is an admission of a believer's ignorance and dependence on God. Prayer is what we do. Prayer. Where it tells us, the, the song says, take everything to God in prayer. So get it together and be ye ready. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of this darkness, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Right. You, bring these, you bring him or them in with you, pay attention, to your thoughts, in your thoughts. When we come together, as we come down to the altar, we say we're going to pray for people, and, and we're going to pray, and, and God watches the heart and the intent of your prayers. Amen. He, he searches each and every one of us That's right. as we come to him. Mm -hmm. As we come to him in prayer, yes. the sincerity of our prayer. Mm -hmm. Now my message is for us all here and now to be stronger, wiser, yes. more vigilant, all right. careful of our speech, the words. Yes. He is clever much more than you and I could ever be, alone. Powers that we can only hold a bay with God's help. Amen. Who am I speaking of? In Genesis 3 and 1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. The Hebrew word for subtle means crafty and shrewd in a negative sense. So we see here, whom we have to guard against. That's right. That's right. Matthew chapter 2, 6 and 41 says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Mm -hmm. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, we got to pray. Amen. I'm here today just to share that with you. We have not taken prayer serious enough. We don't take the words that we use serious enough. When we come before the throne of God and we ask God for prayer, we, we come to him, be serious. Don't leave out nothing. Nothing. He loves that. He already knows. He already knows. And when we come with him honest and earnestly, he takes that prayer to the Father and he says, look, this is mine. To the, this is mine. There's nothing that I won't do that they ask. Well, I told them in my word. Going back to my preaching text. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, and you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Isn't that prayer? When we go to God in prayer, so he sent me back today to tell of all, tell us all, to pray more. Amen. We need it now more than ever. Yes. We must teach our youth how to pray more. Don't call your friends up and tell them what's going on. Call up God. Amen. Answer the call. Yes. Answer the call. Yes. Yes. You know, oftentimes I, I, I've seen where the Muslim in the, in, in, in the communities, you had a, the mosque. And they be outside and they have a, a call of prayer. I don't know if you guys ever heard that, but they have a calling. It might be 12 o'clock prayer. Somebody's out there calling for prayer. Right. Us as Christians, we're supposed to pray constantly. That don't mean continuous, but to pray frequently. To pray frequently. To pray earnestly. The Holy Spirit came today and told to tell you, we must pray earnestly. Uh -huh. Dig inside yourselves. You know, I don't. When you tell God a situation, God is going to do something about it. We can only listen and, and create more gossip. But God could do something about it. Amen. He's the only one that could do something about it. 
Luke 21 and 36 says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Consider Jesus for a minute here. Jesus knew what was about to go down. He went and he went to pray. He told them to pray with him. He said, watch and pray. He said, but I need you to pray so you will not be led into temptation. And he said, Father, if this cup could be removed, take it from me. But nevertheless, let your will be done. Brothers and sisters, our life is not our own. It belongs to God. He wants us all to come to him. And it's, it's, it's not nothing really deep. You know, as I began to get this lesson together, and I was like, Lord, help me. You know, and he, he's like, well, you know, you ain't got to be so deep with people coming up with some real deep words. Just talk to them. Tell them what, what's going on in the world. Pray. Pray to me. Come to me. Talk to me. They could talk to me individually. See, we don't need that priest to go before us. We could come to the throne ourselves. Oh, I was so proud to hear my wife get up and preach, pray this morning and how she took us before the throne of God. And all I could do was just sit there and just my heart just was glad. You know, as I look out and I see each and every one of you out here listening, even the, the, the kids, you know, teach them the right words to use. Some people curse because they don't have any better words to use. They don't know what else to say. They just, you, you, you're throwing out words. Not understand the power behind those words. You know, we are so quick to call our, you know, be careful what you say to people. You know, they, they curse their kids before they even get, you're going to be just like the such and such and such and such and such and such. You know, be careful what you say. God is listening always. Whether we go before him or not in prayer, he's listening. Why pray? 1 John 5 and 13 says, These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Amen. Do y'all hear what he's saying? He hears us. We're not so, like, like the, the song said, I give you my heart. I'm just little. I'm just a little something. I, Father, you know, if I was a shepherd, I'd give you a lamb. You know, I mean, but, but listen to what the, the word said. I would give you my heart. This, all I could give you is my heart. Give you me. Not this blood pumper. The Holy Spirit showed me what is our heart. From the crown of our head to the soles of our feet is your heart. Every inch of you is your heart. Amen. Giving him your everything. Yeah. Every part of you. Yeah. And if we know this, that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. In the Old Testament, they came with several names. Uh, I, I, I looked up the names of God. You, you hear some people say, you know, El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty. El Elyon, the Most High God. Elyon, God. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of, pray, of peace. Jehovah Sabatha, the Lord of hosts. We hear all these different names, but that was in the Old Testament. So now all we have to do is call on the name of? The name of? And he will come. He will be there. Take everything to God in prayer. Everything. Don't hold back one iota. He's listening. He's watching. You got to watch. You know your enemy, the adversary. You know the devil is out there trying to take, kill. And John 10 and 10 says that the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come to give you life and that life more abundantly. God is able to do whatever we ask him to do. 
If I was to take a poll right now to say, have God answered any one of your prayers, I'm sure each and every one of us will raise our hand. At some point in time, God has answered the prayer. Let us continue to pray for one another. Earnestly. Earnestly. Watch the words that we say. Earnestly. Even among, especially the congregation in, in the church house. When the doors of the church open, do not think that Satan do not come in. He's going to come in and he might sit right next to you. And check you out. Look at you from head to toe. Inside and out. Waiting for you to just say something that he could use. Because the only power he got is what you give him, really. I mean, through your fears and through your doubts and through your troubles and through, through that. When he hear you say, you know what, I don't like such and such and such and such, he could use that. He could use that to cause confusion amongst the, the, the brethren. And, 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 and chaos began to go. When the next thing you know, you got this group over here, you got that group over there because we're not praying right for one another. We're talking about one another. So I'm here today to let you know that the power of prayer, how many of you know that there's power in prayer in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name, there is power in Jesus' name. Come to him. Come to him. He is the true vine. My brothers and sisters, God wants you all to know as we came down to the altar that he heard that prayer. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much done because I have to stop when the Holy Spirit says I'm done. But there's a little hymn that I want to do, and I want you to take this with you. And it simply goes like this. I pray that I will, I pray we all be ready. I pray that we all be ready. I pray that we all be ready when he returns. I pray that we all get our business straight so that we'd all be at the gate. I pray that we all be ready when he returns. I pray that we all be ready. Won't you stand? I pray that we all be ready. The doors of the church are I open. pray that we all be ready. Are you ready? When he returns. Uh-huh. I pray that we all get our business straight. Do you have it straight? So that we'll all meet at the gate. Yeah. I pray that we all be ready when he returns. Are you ready? Two men walking down the road. One of them had a heart pure as gold. Would that be one today? The sky was split. The pure at heart raptured away, but the other left behind, who did not purchase heart and time. He cried to the Lord, but for him it was too late. 